Hi, welcome to one of our SABCS snippets. I'm here with Dr. Javeri, who's gonna talk about our Ember trial that was presented today at SABCS in our general session, really exciting presentation. So um, can you just go ahead and give a real brief overview of what the trial was like? Absolutely. So Ember 3 is a phase three global open label trial that enrolled patients with ER positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer. These were patients who could have either recurred on or within 12 months of their adjuvant therapy. This comprised about 30% of the patients. And then 60% of the patients were patients who had had progression on their first line therapy. Now, both of these settings could have been an aromatase inhibitor with or without a CDK4-6 inhibitor and no other therapy for advanced disease. 874 patients were randomized to one of the three arms, first arm being immunostrant alone, second arm being standard of care endocrine therapy, and a third arm that was added as a study amendment early in accrual, which was evaluating immunostrant plus abemaciclib. And really the trial had three primary endpoints. It was looking at investigator assessed PFS when you compare immunostrant alone with standard endocrine therapy in ESR1 mutant patients and in all patients. And if either of the two were significant, then it was going to look at investigator-assessed PFS for immunostrant abema versus immunostrant alone in concurrently randomized patients. And then we also looked at overall survival if the PFS was um, going to be significant. And what we showed, I think, in terms of efficacy was that in the ESR1 mutant patients, there was a significant improvement with PFS for immunostrant alone compared to standard endocrine therapy. This was 5.5 months versus 3.8 months. We did not see that it reached statistical significance when we looked at immunostrant alone versus standard endocrine therapy in all patients. However, it was interesting to see that majority subgroup, which was not carrying the ESR1 mutation, there was no PFS difference and the hazard ratio there was one. And then the most interesting part, I think, was the combination data, because this is the very first phase three trial, a prospective study that is now giving us the data for a novel endocrine agent in combination with CDK4-6. But importantly, 65% of the patients were pre-treated with the CDK4-6 before they went on to this doublet regimen. And despite that, we saw that there was benefit to this combination compared to immunostrant alone. In fact, for the, all patients, the median PFS was 9.4 months with the combination compared to five and a half months, which was statistically significant. When we focused on the prior CDK4-6 inhibitor group, this was 9.1 months versus 5.5 months, similar and consistent with the overall population. And very interestingly, the benefit was consistent regardless of ESR1 mutations, regardless of PITK pathway mutations, kind of really questioning, do we really need to worry about a biomarker or can we just derive a substantial benefit, a substantial progression-free survival benefit of 9.4 months, regardless of any of these testing, which is very reassuring. Sure. An important piece that I'd also like to highlight here is the safety profile. I think monotherapy mm -hmm. was very, very well tolerated, very low grade, grade one, mainly single episodes of diarrhea, fatigue, or nausea. Discontinuation rates for monotherapy were low at 4%. No concerning signal. A class concern has been bradycardia and mm -hmm. ocular toxicity. Yes. We did not see that with imlunestrant. And then even for the combination, the most common toxicity as expected was diarrhea, but predominantly grade one. The safety profile was consistent with what we know about abemaciclib mm -hmm. and really something that is favorable to fulvestrant abemaciclib that we've seen reports for. Discontinuation rates, again, very attractive, very reassuring of 6%. Yeah, I think that was something I definitely picked up on your presentation. The discontinue rates and the combination right, therapy were right. just barely above the right. single, single therapy arm. Right. Uh, other thing that I wanted to bring up is the brain penetration mm -hmm. of this molecule. So can yeah. you can you uh, describe a little bit about what you saw in the trial with women coming in with known brain metastases? Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, the trial provided very small numbers, but what was a promising signal is what we are able to see in clinic. So preclinically, imlunestrant has demonstrated both CNS penetrance and CNS activity, which is why we say this is a novel sort, which is brain penetrant. So it was really interesting if that could be something that we could see in clinic. Now in Ember 3, because of this preclinical data that we had, we performed a post hoc exploratory analysis and we tried to look at the cumulative incidence of CNS progression rates. Trial required that all patients at baseline get an MRI brain. So there were a few patients with stable treated brain metastases for which we would continue to do serial brain imaging. But it also obviously 
detected no brain metastases at baseline for a few patients. In fact, 11 out of the 15 did not have brain metastases at baseline for who we did not mandate serial CNS imaging. Sure. So while we did see this trend of lower CNS progression with immunostrend, a promising signal now Absolutely. from preclinic to clinic, which is exciting, yeah. I think. These hazard ratio estimates have to be taken with caution. Sure, small numbers. Small numbers yeah. and, and lack of this mandatory CNS imaging. Sure. But I do think that at least it gives us some little more hope that yes, what we saw preclinically could happen in clinic. And the combination I think to me is interesting in that regard because abemaciclib also has CNS activity. Sure. And so with this combination, I feel like maybe we might be able to be at a place where we can think right. about this in brain metastasis. Well, and brain metastasis are such a, you know, life, quality of life, limiting Absolutely. event for our patients. So it's Absolutely. so important to try to prevent that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Snippets. This was a great presentation. I know there's going to be a lot more chatter and talk <laughs> about this trial throughout the uh, symposium. And we'll probably be debated on what we're going to do on Monday morning in our yes. session on Friday. So everybody turn into that. And again, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having Thanks. me. Thank you.